And in love before you laid the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of the Open Bible Podcast. My name is Ethan Jones, and together with Pastor Jeremy, we have been seeking over the past two months to edify the church in Pinocchio, as well as anyone beyond who might be listening, with weekly devotions through the scriptures. And we also just wrapped up a series a few weeks ago where we dove into the Proverbs, putting out daily episodes through the month of January, seeking to unpack God's Word together. As such, those episodes are still up, and we'd certainly encourage you to go back and listen to those if you haven't had the chance yet. Again, our hope is that this series would push you all to think biblically and apply the Word of God into your lives, not just reading scripture, but seeking to apply it into our daily living as people of God. As such, our hope is that you would not use this as a replacement for your time in the Word, but as a way to fill your life even more with the living Word of God that is active. With all that said, I would pray that today's study would deepen your love for God and your desire to be conformed to His image according to His holy, inspired, an inerrant word. So let's read together from today's passage, which comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. It reads, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord, and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in all my prayers, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation, and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you might know what is the hope to which he called you, what are the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and all authority and power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he has put all things under his foot, and he gave him his head over all things to the church, which is the body and the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I feel it's important before we dive into this text today to recognize the reality that we are reading someone else's mail. Now, you've probably heard this before, but it's important in seeking to properly read and unpack biblical texts like this to recognize that these letters, they are written to someone else. They are written to a specific church context. And yet, these words are written for us as well as part of the church. So, they're written for us, but they're not written to us. Paul is writing to the people of God in Ephesus, not to the church in Pinocchio. But again, this does not mean that it is not written for the church in Pinocchio. Meaning that, as the word of God, what is written is inspired and applicable to all of us today. The scope of this message includes all of us who profess faith in Christ. So let's seek to have that balance today as we read today recognizing that though this message is not written to us directly, it is written for us as the church. So let's read again. Paul begins this section again by setting an example of the heart which we all should have in our prayer. He says in verse 15, For this reason, the reason being because he has heard of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and their love towards all the saints. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. See, Paul is setting for us a model, praying without ceasing. 
And we should not merely be making supplication, but thanking God for his goodness and faithfulness in our lives and the lives of other believers. And Paul thanks God for his reader's faith, love, hope, and grace in partnership in the gospel. So as he does this, it's not surprising that Paul is urging his readers to follow the same example in thankful prayer. Later in Ephesians, he exhorts his audience to be filled with the Spirit. And this, as he says, means giving thanks always and for everything to the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, because as we know, as he writes in Romans 8, that everything God works together for our good, this means that we can give thanks in all circumstances. So Paul's thanksgiving seems to be intimately linked to his prayers. When he gives thanks for his readers, he's often expressing that thanksgiving as a prayer to God, not based on some inherent goodness of the people, but faithfulness of God in the people. So he thanks God for keeping the people, but he encourages the people through his prayers to continue to seek the Lord as their source of strength and obedience. And likewise, because of his dependence on God for all things, Paul relies on the power of strength and prayer for his daily life. He's not only praying for the people, but asks for prayers from the people. And further, this explains why Paul not only asks for the people to pray for him, but all people everywhere in 1 Timothy 2, because likewise, we depend on God for all things. It's the power of prayer, it works to strengthen us as well. So according to Paul's example, we should be living in the recognition that prayer is essential in the Christian life. Our prayers should be done without ceasing and full of thankfulness to God for his goodness, for his faithfulness, And we should be praying for our leaders, for our friends, our family, and our congregations, all other people. Many of us have had people probably in our lives who do not respond very well to good news. They seem disappointed any time we tell them that the Lord is doing something good in our lives. Because for them, everything is a competition. But what we have here is a reminder that sanctification, it is not a competition. Rather, we are to lift our prayers up in thanksgiving to God when he see him at work in the lives of others. Because, again, it does not come from our own strength, but from God who gives us life and breath and strength. Further, Paul makes clear here what his prayer of supplication is for the people, making clear what he is asking God to do in the lives of the people. He asks, Would the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Meaning that, as we read, that we would have the eyes of our hearts enlightened, namely knowing the hope to which he has called us. And what is that hope but the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the workings of his great might, that he worked in Christ and raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all ruler and all authority and all power and all dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullest of him who fills all in all. And this is gospel, friends. This is the good news that has been delivered to us. Life everlasting, a glorious inheritance, and communion with God who is over all things. As we hear these words of Paul, his prayer is that the church would lay hold of that glorious inheritance prepared for us beforehand predestined for us beforehand. So as we come to a close today, I want to encourage you all, follow the model Paul has set for us. Praying for all peoples, and especially those who are our co-workers in Christ, that they would be strengthened coming to know God better. 
as we would seek to do the same. And pray for your leaders. Pray that they would be strengthened as they seek to pour into you. And as you do this, know that it is only by the power of God that we find our breath and life and being. So seek God first, rather than your own strength. And give all your thanks to the Lord as you see all of his mercies surrounding you. Blessings on you all today.